Hi, welcome back to Everyday Behavior. My name is Mary Ann Shepard, and today we are talking again about our data collection within discrete trial training. So this whole series has been about discrete trial training. We've talked about what discrete trial training is, the types of skills that you may teach while you are teaching discrete trial training. We've talked about the importance of data collection. Here we're going to look at a data collection or a daily data record sheet. So this daily data collection sheet, I want to give a big shout out to Alexis Richardson. Uh, when we first started working together, we kind of played around with data sheets and worked a little bit more collaboratively. But this data sheet definitely has been refined and um, improved through her efforts. And so I want to give a big shout out to Alexis Richardson for allowing me to utilize her data sheet as one of our materials. But uh, we talked about in data collection that important things that you want to record uh, the student name and the date uh, you want to record what objective it is that you're working on and so if you look here you can see here's a spot to record your objective you want to record what phase you're at so are you at baseline teaching or maintenance you want to make sure that you record your prompting level so what level of prompting are you utilize, utilizing um, or what's the goal prompting level you want to record what type of environment that you're teaching this skill in. So tabletop, naturalistic, or community, or home. Uh, you can alter or modify this to reflect that. So again, uh, we have date here twice. That's okay. Um, what time of day were you teaching this? And then you can see here that you have your trials. Uh, so you can see that there's trial one, trial two, trial three. So we talked about the industry uh, standard is typically 10 trials, but you may find that you do more trials over the course of the day. Maybe you teach this skill twice uh, during that day. You can see a little plus here um, underneath each trial, a little minus, an NR, and a P, okay? So what you're recording here is the student's response. So for trial one, were they correct or incorrect, or did they provide no response? And then if they were correct, did you have to prompt it? And so you're just going to circle correct or incorrect or no response, or you can use a highlighter. And then did you have to prompt it? And you can see your prompting levels up here, okay? And so you present those trials, and for each one you record or you circle what their response was. And you can see here uh, that you can do these masked or you can also have multiple objectives on one sheet. This reduces the number of pieces of paper that you have because if you're focusing on uh, this sheet here has one, two, three, four, five potential objectives on it. And so that way, if your pace is fast, you can focus on five different things within the course of that teaching session and have all of your data right there in one place rather than having multiple data sheets for a lot of different objectives. So it kind of reduces the amount of paperwork that you have. Um, some people prefer to have uh, one objective on a data sheet and then multiple days along the way. Um, and then you just kind of go through those data sheets and some people prefer all of theirs to be on the same day. You can see here as you go along that there's a column here or a spot here to put the therapist's initials um, of who it was that was working. And then after you're done for the day, you can go through and calculate the percent correct for each specific objective. So what percent were they correct on that objective? And so to do that, you simply look at the number of trials that you administered. So let's say you did administer 10 for that day and they got eight of them correct. Well, then they would be at 80% correct for that goal. And then you're going to take that and apply that to your graphing um, or the graph for that particular objective. And so you're going to kind of go through each of those objectives, calculate maybe you did uh, 20 on this and they had... Um, 15 of the 20 were correct. Okay, well, in that circumstance, they were 75% accurate. And so you're going to kind of just calculate your percentages for each of those. You can see your key down here below uh, shows your correct response, incorrect response, no response, or P for prompted. Um, here on your prompting levels, you can see this FP, PP, MOD, uh, GES. You can see each of, the, each of those. So you can see FP means a full physical prompt, PP means a partial physical prompt, MOD means a model prompt, GES means a gestural prompt, MOV means movement, 
V-E-R means verbal prompt and B-I-S means a visual prompt. So um, having that shortened uh, abbreviated version up there allows you to kind of put all of that next to each objective and then just highlight or circle it pretty easily. So I hope that you found this helpful or a good example of a discrete trial training sheet uh, or record sheet. Uh, we do encourage you to kind of play around with your data collection. You can find a lot of examples by Googling it on the internet or just doing a general search through your search engine. But uh, you want to find a data sheet that works for you and make sure that you are recording data on all of your discrete trials uh, and all of your goals and objectives. Thank you so much for watching. We encourage you to like or follow us on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button below. Um, and we just really encourage you to continue watching all of our strategies and all of our sessions so that you can continue to develop your skills within ABA and uh, in working with kids with autism and developmental disabilities. Parents, I hope if you're watching this that uh, it provides you a little bit of insight into what your children are doing on a daily basis. Uh, you can find all of our materials on our website at www.everydaybehaviors.com. As always, a big shout out to the Oklahoma State Department of Education who helps make these videos possible. And with this video, also a big shout out to Alexis Richardson who continues to help make these videos possible and also helped contribute to uh, this data sheet. Thank you so much and uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the future.